YouTube and welcome back to the Loose Transistor channel. I'm your host Lucas and today we're back with part two of our build and review series on the FPV Syndicate Shredder. I know it's been a little while and uh, I kind of left you guys hanging there for a few days more than I usually do. I usually release these videos a lot faster but uh, I've just been very busy with uh, buying a house and work has been pretty crazy so I haven't had as much time to dedicate to this build but uh, we're here now. Let's get this thing done. Let's get this thing built because it's freaking badass. Uh, I just before we get started with that, I just wanted to let you guys know about a few other things that are coming on the channel uh, pretty soon. I started working on some crazy uh, Mia X builds and I'm gonna grab a couple of them here. So as I said, I've been playing around with uh, some weird Mia X builds. And one of the ones that I'm working on is uh, this guy right here, which is basically like an inverted uh, toilet tank style battery. I'll explain more when we actually get to the build series, but uh, this is one of them. And one of the other things that I did was uh, design a little pod for a different configuration of the Mia that I want to try as well. But I'll be going over all this stuff in detail when I actually release the video. So make sure you subscribe if you don't want to miss any of this cool stuff. I'll be telling you guys uh, about my thought process around it and how I designed it and our results and actually using this stuff in the real world. So let's, without further ado, let's get started with this build. All right guys, so we're about ready to get started on building the FPV Syndicate Shredder. I'm gonna be doing things slightly different than what most people are probably gonna end up doing. I'm not sure yet. But before we move ahead, I'm just gonna tell you guys about some of the things that I did to prepare for this build. So the first thing that I did was, of course, apply CN Arclade across the arms. So you can see both parts of the arms right here, right here at the front in case it hits. I'm not sure if it's gonna hit or not, I don't think so. And I also did uh, the edges of the canopy right here because this stuff is probably gonna land on the ground and it's gonna scratch up. So having some of that layer right there, it's gonna protect it from delamination. So I highly recommend you guys do the same. Whenever you build anything out of carbon fiber, it's probably a good call to put some uh, super glue on it. So uh, the other things that I did to prepare for this build that I didn't feel like showing you guys because it's just stupid and it's you guys can figure it out. It's nothing too hard. Uh, I put some, uh, I'm gonna end up using this uh, Metec PDB that I found because it has the 12 volts and the five volts that I need and I don't have to worry about it. And uh, I just put a little bit of um, electrical tape on the back here because I'll do it, it's painted in the back. There was a few little spots where I could see gold and uh, that tells me that it's possible that maybe by an odd chance I might short it out. So I'd rather not take the risk and I just put some tape around it and that is gonna keep it from shorting against the body. And you guys will see why pretty soon. And the last thing that I did to prepare for this build was to drill out my FC, the Omnibus F7. So I drilled out all four corners pretty big and I put these gummies on it because uh, I wanna have this thing soft mounted. And I might not end up using these bobbins at all. I might just go directly onto the screws. You guys will see in a second. But but uh, I, I decided to put the gummies on because I want to have at least some amount of soft mounting on my FC so that I can push the tune on this thing. So uh, let's get started with the build. So as far as I understand here, we're going to need some of the longer screws. Yep, so we're going to need four of the long, long, long screws. So let's open this up here carefully. Let's see if we can pull out those screws. So this bag, maybe I have a little box here that we can throw things into. There we go. This will make things a little bit easier. Ooh, it came with O-rings too, badass, cool. Well, I'm not gonna need these, but I will save them for another build because you never know when you're gonna need some O-rings for soft mounting stuff. So I'm gonna pull these out real quick. So that's cool. So they do ship O-rings for you guys. And it does come with a very, very tiny short standoffs right here so that you can use these to uh, put your FC on, which is pretty cool. It has some lock nuts. So a lot of cool little parts here that come with the kit itself. So if you want a soft mount, you can use just the O-rings, you don't have to worry about it. O-rings are okay. The only problem with O-rings I find is that if you crash or anything like that, they tend to move around. You have to readjust them or you end up getting like tweaks and crap all over the place. It just ruins your tune. So if you are running O-rings, make sure you check them every now and then. Uh, oh, I missed one screw. All right, so we have four of the long screws that come with the kit and we're gonna grab four of the lock nuts and uh, this is sort of similar to how the Hyph build went together where uh, lock nuts were also used as spacers. So there we go. <clears throat> All right, I'll just put that aside for now. So the way the frame goes together, as I explained in the first video, is uh, with two arms. And this is actually your base plate, so it's at the bottom. And this is gonna go on like this, and that's gonna go on like that. To hold everything in place, we're gonna use uh, screws. So I'm gonna put four screws here on the bottom plate 
As you can see, this bottom plate's already all hollowed out for your uh, battery strap. And the best part is that these have already been beveled or chamfered or however you want to call it. They are nicely smoothed out. Like you're not going to cut anything. No straps are going to get cut by this thing unless it's like some crazy impact. So you don't have to do that, which is great. It saves me a lot of time. I didn't have to do any sanding whatsoever to this frame, which is sweet. Okay, so that goes on like that. And then we put the first arm. Boom, and the second arm. Oh. Like this. Now we've got to start making some decisions here on how everything is going to go together. So, uh, if you're not using a PDB or if you're using like the Betaflight F3 or something that is, or a DTFC, something that has a PDB and an FC all in one, you're going to use this little plate right here to stiffen everything up. So you're going to put the plate down, and then you're going to put these uh, these lock nuts, and then you're going to put your FC on top. Because I'm going to be using a PDB, I will be use, using this for a different purpose later, maybe. So I'm gonna be using this PDB right here. As we said, I've already prepared it. So I just need to figure out where I want the battery wires to come out of. Yeah, so I'm happy with that. So these these cutouts right here that you see, let me see if we can, no, actually let's put these screws on first and then I'll show you guys because that way it's not gonna fall off. So I'm just gonna put these on real quick. So my tool here is not actually long enough to screw this uh, these lock nuts all the way through. So I'm gonna have to come back with some pliers or something and finish the job here in a sec. Let's just get these uh, as far as I can go with just this tool. Cool. Okay, so as I was saying before I tighten it up, so there's these two holes here in the bottom of the frame and uh, you can definitely route your ESC wires through here. So it's a nice and clean, the wires don't even ever have to cross over the arms in any way, shape or form and it's completely protected from your props, which is how we're gonna build this one. So you'll be able to see how that goes on. So I'll just do a quick little tighten up here and finish this. Uh, tightening this frame here. Okay, perfect, look at that guys. So we've gotten our PDB mounted in place. Like in theory, you could maybe get away with that, but there's no way for you to screw these on, so that's not gonna work out. Uh, seems like overkill to put on bobbins on top of it all, but let me take a quick look here. Looks like we are gonna use the little bobbins after all because to use that in the screws is going to be the same height as this. And uh, that seems pointless to me. And if I use this guy, I can screw on another standoff on top of it if I need to, to put this plate on, or I can just cap it off and leave it at that. So we are going to use those. I'm just not going to bother with them right now because we don't, we're going to prepare the PDB to, uh, get, uh, to receive the ESCs. So let's do that real quick. So there's a small problem here with my chosen PDB. Uh, I didn't realize this before, but these nuts, yeah, they're touching. And they're touching the pads, positive, negative. This is gonna create a short and this is gonna be terrible. So I'm gonna remove this and we're gonna try a different PDB that I have here. Okay, so I might have saved the day here actually. Um, so what I did is I got rid of the metal uh, lock nuts for now, and I'm using these orange uh, regular nylon nuts. And this might sound a little bit crazy, but since I am gonna be using the bobbins on top anyway, and these are metal nuts themselves, like these guys right here have metal nuts, I'm not too worried. So uh, we should be able to continue on like this on this path, no problem. And as you've come to see in my channel already, my builds don't usually go exactly to manufacturer's spec, but uh, if you use, uh, maybe if you don't use this PDB, if you use the proper PDB, the one that's meant for this, it's gonna be no problem for you guys. So let's keep, uh, let's keep getting it ready here and putting more solder on this thing here because we still have some pads to go. And then we can worry about mounting ESCs and all that other good stuff. What we've got in here, guys, is the PDB all tinned and ready to go, as you can see all the pads that we need, so all the battery and the ESC pads over here and over here, as well as a 12 volt for the camera and five volt for the VTX-03 that we're gonna be using on this build. So, while this chills out here for a sec, let's see what we're gonna be doing next. Uh, I got this wired up, so now we should probably put on some battery wires for it and uh, start running some ESC wires to this guy as well. So let's see here. 
I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I have a, a leftover from another build. I'm gonna use this because I don't feel like soldering these freaking pigtails all over again. So now we're gonna get the battery wire installed here. As I said, I'm cheating because I already had one all set up here. So we're just gonna solder it to the two pads over here and I'm gonna just cut it at the right distance here that I feel like I'm gonna need for this. Oops, let's go this way, I guess. If you're wondering where this came from, this came from the Hive build, I believe, something like that, or some other build that I had. Uh, that looks pretty good right there. Should be good enough. So let's cut this to size right now. We're cutting right there. Cut the other one to match. Man, it is freaking hot today. I tried to go flying today and I flew like maybe three packs and my my motors were so hot at the end of the third of the third flight that I just had to stop. It's a good thing that I broke a prop and I and I touched the motors because otherwise I would have kept flying. That would have been toast for sure. Alright, so let's do it real quick here. I'm just gonna very quickly quick plug a battery in here, make sure that nothing blows up. So it looks like it's on. Lights came on. Let's make sure that we're getting proper voltage all throughout this guy here. And then while we're down here, I'll probably get the, get the capacitor set up as well. So let's make sure that we're getting here. What, 11.29? Right, so 3S, okay, what the fuck am I talking about? And I'm here at all. Interesting. Okay. So we have our battery set up here, and our PDB is getting power and nothing fried, which is excellent. So let's move on here and get our, our capacitor set up. Let's see what we have here in the way of capacitors. I have tons of capacitors here, let's see. Louis SR capacitor right here, boom, boom, boom. So we're just gonna get it soldered on to, uh, like right there basically, and then I'm just gonna tape it to the to the um, the battery wire here, and that should be okay. So let's see. Okay, so we have our capacitor here, and we're also gonna be using TVS diodes, and if you guys have been following along, my last video I talked, uh, where I did a build with the Strictly Racing Drones uh, frame, I told you guys to use both, and the reason being TVS diodes are really good for protecting your sensitive equipment, which is not something that the capacitor does, and the capacitor is really good at keeping the, the noise down on your system. So it's good to use both, because you're protecting your equipment and you're maintaining a low noise level in your electronics, which in turn usually turns out to equate to a cleaner gyro. All right, so we've gotten the this portion here. Let's plug it in and make sure that nothing explodes real quick. No explosions, we're good, excellent. Uh, something else that I might end up doing here is putting a small capacitor on the 12 volt line, but it might not be necessary. Let's see what I have here. Just 6.3 volts, nope, these don't help me at all. You know what, never mind. To. I have another capacitor there, but I'm probably not going to need to, so I'm going to just leave that as it is. And we're going to move on here to starting to run some ESC wires. How about that? Let's get some ESC wires rocking here. Saving wires always pays off. So we have here four wires. This should be all that I need to be able to run down to my ESCs that are gonna be mounted underneath the arm. So before we do that, let us, uh, let's start, actually let's start soldering these. Start putting in, start putting some uh, solder on the ends of these wires here so that we can actually get them soldered to the PDB and run them down and then we'll flip the quad over and start figuring out the ESCs, cool? 
All right guys, so while we're here, I'm just gonna do a quick clean of this board because we are gonna be putting conformal coating on this thing. I, uh, I'm probably part of a terrorist watch group list now because I ordered this uh, conformal coating. I'll show you guys later when I actually go to apply it. It came with so many warnings and SDS sheets and all sorts of crazy stuff that I had no idea. So apparently that's why it's so hard to get this stuff in Canada is because there's so many health concerns and this and that and I don't know, difficult to ship. So here we go, just some uh, isopropyl alcohol to clean the resin off this thing. All right, there we go. So that's nice and clean. And it's ready to receive cons conformal. I'm not gonna conform with quite yet because there's other stuff that I need to solder and route to the bottom. So we'll do that when we get to it. So let's uh, take a look here. Let's leave the frame aside for a second because now it's time to prepare our 32-bit BL Heli ESCs. So these guys are super neat. I've heard some good things about them already uh, in terms of like performance. Seems to be on par or better than what we have out there now. Nothing too crazy in terms of performance, but the features that these guys are gonna be bringing to the table are very interesting and it'll be cool to see how that evolves uh, over time, including things like uh, telemetry for individual ESCs or uh, turtle mode, all sorts of different things that I believe these guys are gonna do. And once these start talking back to the flight controller a little bit more, who knows, maybe we can have uh, some dynamic tunes or something like that going on with our quads. This is all speculation, of course. So uh, let's get started with uh, preparing these. So what I'm gonna do to these guys here is tin the pads uh, on, on the bottom, and on the top for some of them because I'm gonna mount the TVS on the back here. So TVSs are gonna go on this area here. So let's do that first and we'll just get real quick here and we'll, we'll uh, put some tin on these guys. Okay, right, so we're gonna be preparing these 32-bit BioHell ESCs. I've decided the part without the LED, so you have the LED right there. The part without the LED is gonna to touch the arms because I want the LED to shine out of the bottom of the quad so that you can see it when I'm racing. So I'm gonna pin these down here and I'm gonna tin these two pads and prepare them for receiving the TVS diode. Perfect, so the ESCs are clean for now and we're gonna have to clean them again before we can form one, but for now, at least we're not accumulating more rosin on it. So, let's see. So we got these ESCs here and we're pretty much about ready to start mounting them underneath here. Oh, actually, no, first let's uh, mount the TVS diodes before we go any further. So we have one, two, three, four, four TVS diodes and we're gonna mount them on the rear side of the ESC here, the side that's gonna touch the arm. And what we gotta do is mount them reverse bias. So there's a little line right there. That line there is the cathode or the negative side, which is the side that I'm holding. That is gonna touch the battery plus, and the other side is gonna be soldered to the battery minus. All right guys, so here we have one TVS mounted on the back of a BL Heli 32-bit ESC and that should protect all my equipment from any crazy transient voltages or anything like that. So let's keep moving on here, let's get the next one soldered on. All right guys, so we have right here all four of our ESCs with the, um, <coughs> with the TVS installed, and if you'll notice, all of them have the cathode coming out of battery plus, which is correct, and we're good to go on that front. So what I'm gonna do next probably is attach all the signal wires for, for this quad. Okay guys, so we got it here. We got all four of these ESCs are ready with their uh, signal and ground cables. I like to use both. I can move this away for now. Leave these on the side here. And we're gonna get ready to get these mounted on the frame. Cool, so we do have some shrink tubing. 
and what I'm gonna do is only temporarily attach these guys back here. So we're gonna solder all the wires and do everything else, and then we're gonna come back and put these on and conform a coat before I put these on actually. So let's zoom out here for a sec, and I'm just gonna temporarily attach these here where I am pretty much assuming that these guys are gonna go. Okay, so we got all four of the SCs temporarily attached to the arms right now. And what we're gonna do is uh, trim the wires that we need for power and ground. All right guys, so we've gotten all four of these powered up. So I'm gonna just uh, plug in a battery here and test it to make sure that everything is working as it should before I go ahead and conform all code and do all that stuff. So let's just do that really quick. And the reason I'm cutting it free from the carbon here is because I don't want anything to fry by touching the carbon and creating a short. So we're just gonna remove the temporary locks that we have on our ESCs. Okay, so we have the ESCs here free. They are powered. So all I'm gonna do is plug in very gently here and see if the ESCs turn on. I guess without FC they will not do anything. Tempted to solder one motor real quick here, just to test to make sure that we're good. So I'm gonna do that really quickly here. Actually, I don't think we need to solder. Okay, it's very faint to hear, but the motor did initialize. So that tells me that everything is working and we can move on to the next phase. So uh, yeah, I still don't understand these BL Heli 32 ESCs. I kind of expected the LEDs to just come on, but I guess it needs the FC for that to happen. So, well, live and learn, right? So this looks good. I think this is gonna work out just fine. So before we move ahead and finish up, let's uh, clean this up with some good old isopropyl and get ready to apply some conformal coating on this guy. This is the vial of conformal that I got and it came with this awesome like hazmat warning and all sorts of different stuff. So I'm gonna be a little bit proactive and I am gonna be wearing a respirator and a glove and gloves here. All right guys, so we have the ESCs conformal and I put on some shrink tubing on them so they're nice and protected and nothing is gonna to touch the frame and short out or anything like that. So we're looking good to uh, get these uh, pretty much attached to the frame here. Now I just need to figure out where I'm gonna route these signal wires. So I could just go up like this right here through the side. That's not terrible. It seems to me like there's plenty of room to go through the inside plate. So why not go through there? So why not just feed them through here one by one? I'm gonna start putting some uh, quick heat, uh, some quick zip ties here just to start holding things in place. All right, so we got one ESC secured here with two zip ties and it's ready to receive uh, the motor. So I'm gonna keep going here, zip tie the rest of these guys, and then we will mount the motors in place and get ready to solder those. Okay, so there we go, we got two arms in, good to go. I'm just gonna end up having to put like a bit of a taller piece of foam here to make sure that the battery doesn't rest on the wires, but it should be no problem, I've done that before. <clears throat> All right, guys. So here we have it. We have the four ESCs mounted on the bottom of the quad. We have the PDB here set up uh, already with the capacitor and the pigtail ready to go. We have the signal wires here all ready to go. So the next thing we're gonna do here is actually mount the motors on and get these soldered. And then I'm actually gonna solder up uh, a couple of leads to power the flight controller with. And finally, uh, all the, well, the video hardware. The last thing we're gonna do is put the signal wires in place on the proper pins right there. So let's see here. Right, so we're gonna screw these motors on, get them mounted up nice, nice. Get some blue Loctite as always. So that stuff is good. And let's get started with the motor. So as I said before, we're gonna be threading the motor wires through the arm. So there's a little hole right here. And we're gonna put it through right there. And it's gonna look a little bit weird at first, but We'll get it in place. All 
I actually don't like how this motor feels in my hand. It, it feels kind of loose, and that's going to give me troubles when I go to tune. So I'm just going to leave this one off. I'm going to replace it with another one that I have here. Uh, I'll just save this one here for spares later on. If I burn anything or anything like that, I'll have one more. But this motor does not feel nice. I think it needs just another shim or two on the on the stack here, and it would be perfect. But for now, I cannot really trust this motor. Yeah, it doesn't feel as good as this guy here. This guy here feels really smooth, so we're gonna go with this guy. I'm just gonna swap him out. So now that we replaced that motor that felt a little bit funky, we'll see. It's probably fine, but I just don't wanna have problems when I go to tune this guy, so let's check it out right here. I feel smooth, I feel smooth, I feel smooth. Perfect, yeah. I was feeling like little vibrations through the frame just from spinning the motor, so I could tell that that bell wasn't, wasn't quite right. I mean, $9 motors, or I think, yeah, $9, uh, sorry, these might have been, what are we more than $9, like 11 bucks or something like that. Anyway, not a lot of money for these motors, so I'm not too worried if one of them ends up, ends up being uh, a dud. I have a few others that I can uh, replace if need be, and these are pretty easy to come by if you just order them from Banggood. So let's see here. All right, so we got the motors in place. Now what we gotta do is wire up the motors, and then we can move on to doing the video line and the signals and all that other stuff. So let's uh, get ready here and tin all four of our ESCs and then get the wires attached. Okay, so we've got the ESCs tinned. Now all I'm gonna do is get these wires ready. So I'm just gonna basically like fold them over here and uh, put some zip ties there to hold them in place where I want them to be and then I can cut them to size and uh, place them exactly where I need them to be. All right guys, there you have it. We have the three wires soldered to their respective uh, poles on the motor and then we're gonna reverse everything through BL Heli later on. So I'm just gonna go zip through and get all the rest of these guys here soldered and then we'll do a quick test. All right guys, so we've gotten the ESCs and the motors hooked up. So everything is wired here in the bottom through the bottom of the quad. And if you look at the top here, minus these uh, ugly loose wires that I have right here. It's looking pretty damn clean. There's like nothing there to get hit by some props, nothing there to get cut, so that's awesome. <coughs> this should keep me in the race much, much longer, which is badass. I kind of like this feature of having the wires also neatly tucked away. Super cool. So we'll see how these motors uh, stack up and everything else as well. So before we move on, we're gonna plug in a battery here and make sure that I get the tones out of the four motors. And uh, the FC is not even connected, so I'm gonna pull this off here. I just had it there for a mop. So we're just gonna plug this in real quick, make sure that nothing blows up. And then after that's done, I'm gonna clean up the what I just soldered and put some conformal on that stuff. So here we go. Yep, we got tones. Let's do it one more time here, make sure that I get tones on all four. Yep, tones on all four, so everything initialized, perfecto. So we're good to go, we didn't burn anything, everything has been wired, good to go so far. So let's just get uh, some paper towel, clean up all this mess here, and uh, move on to the conformal coating. All right, so I got gloves and a respirator here, and I wish I had some more of that dry drone stuff because you don't need all this jazz because it's not dangerous. Safety first, kids. Make sure you wear your protection. I have here my MG Chemicals Conformal Silicone Coating. You might be saying to yourself, oh no, he's getting conformal coating all over the carbon. Uh, it's not a big deal, I really don't care. I care more that my ESCs be protected from any water so that I can fly in the rain and not worry about it. All right guys, so we got uh, most of the electronics that we installed so far are all conformal coated and protected and good to go. So while this stuff dries, uh, yeah, we just have to wait for the stuff to dry and then we're gonna hook up the VTX-03 and our EGS-1177 camera as well. And then the last thing we're gonna actually do is wire up uh, what we need for the flight controller and the signal pins and all that stuff. So I'm gonna take a quick break here while this stuff uh, dries out because it really, really, really stinks. So make sure you do this in a ventilated area and wear a respirator or all that other stuff. I just don't want you guys getting hurt on my account. So check back in a minute. All right guys, so the, <clears throat> the conformal coating has dried on the areas that I applied it on on the PDB. So we don't have to worry about that right now. What we're gonna do is uh, get ready to wire up the camera, harness, and uh, the VTX right here, which is the VTX-03. So what I'm gonna start by doing is actually removing the power leads 
or actually cutting this, this thing all together here because we're not going to need that. I'm just going to need the video wire for what I'm going to do. So I'm going to cut the two little power wires that you see right here because I'm not going to power the camera from this guy. So, very carefully cut these two here. Boom, one, two. Cool. So those are gone now. So now we just have the video signal and this here, which is feeds the VTX03, which is the five volt line. So I'm just going to remove the pigtail from that as well and get ready to solder that onto the five volt lead that's right there. So there's a five volt out right here. We're just going to get this soldered up real quick. So, so far I have to say that the whole process of putting this, this drone together has been pretty seamless and pretty easy. Uh, no real problems, everything has gone together quite easily and I love having the ESCs in the bottom mounted this way. I'm sure I'm not gonna, I'm sure they're gonna last a lot longer that way too, so uh, that's awesome. And even with these motors here, it doesn't feel too heavy. We'll check out the weight when we're done, of course. But uh, let's move along here. I'm just gonna very quickly tin the wires. Alright, so we have 5 volts, let's do a quick battery check, make sure there's nothing fried, let's turn that around, yep, we're good, so it's turned on, it's to zero power right now, as you can see, but I'm not going to worry about that right now, we'll just leave it like that, <clears throat> okay, so now, all we got to do is get the camera harness going. So probably I won't need it much more than that much wire to get the camera all hooked up here. And I'm going to separate the video line because that we're going to mate with the one from the VTX-03 so that we can get video. And uh, yes, I am bypassing OSD because I just don't use that stuff. I really don't like it. Uh, <clears throat> I can keep my builds simpler these days. No OSD doesn't do me any headache. Okay, so let's take a quick look here what we have done so far. So we have the VTX-03 wired on to 5 volts and we have the camera wired on 12 volts. So now we're going to uh, make the two here and uh, splice the two wires together. So we're going to be going... Cool. So now if I've done everything correctly, we should get video. So uh, let's try to get some video going here. Put the camera there. We've got the, our trusty monitor here. Now we need to uh, set this up, I think. Okay, we should switch it to a 200 milliwatt, I think, or 50, yeah, 200 milliwatt. It gets a little bit warmer for sure, but with airflow, it should be fine. So let's just unplug this real quick. Okay, so we know that the video is working and uh, good to go, so we don't have to worry about that right now. We can worry about uh, actually getting a little bit more conformal coating on the stuff that we just installed. And actually, before I do that, I want to run a couple of uh, a couple of wires here <clears throat> to uh, to do the LED lighting. You know what? I'm gonna leave the LED lighting out of it. I'm gonna bank on the fact that these already have some pretty bright LEDs, and we'll just go with that. Don't need to be overkill. You just need some light when you're racing, so I think that'll be fine. We can leave these. I can save these for another build. But uh, those are super nice LEDs, by the way. RTFQ has some really cool LEDs when it comes to this. I just don't want to run the wires here, and I don't really have anywhere nice to mount it. Uh, maybe in the back here, but that's stupid. Yeah, no. No LEDs. We're going to get to go as it is right here. 
So let's get the conformal coating applied. So let's do our thing. Since this conformal stuff is kind of nasty and I feel like I have to suit up every time that I have to apply it, I decided to just go ahead and do a bunch of it all I want. So I did the middle of the FC and the bottom and not all the pins or anything like that. I'll do that after, but it's already pre-coated. So it's good to go. That is all good to go and already coated and protected. This guy here has been coated on both sides and is good to go as well. And I also did the receiver. So pretty much everything on this build that's going in right now is waterproof. So that's awesome. So I can race in the rain. And if this thing crashes in the lake or something like that, it'll probably still be fine. So um, it's not as good as the dry drone stuff because this stuff really smells bad and the dry drone stuff didn't smell at all. And I felt pretty safe using it, but uh, we'll see. Uh, it's a lot cheaper to get this stuff, that's for sure. I guess it is time to put the flight controller on. There's really uh, no more no thing else to do here. And the way this guy is going to go on is like that. Cool. And the other thing that I'm going to end up doing is after I put some, uh, some shrink cubing on this guy, is that he's gonna live right here in the middle of the, between the flight controller and, uh, <clears throat> and the PDB. It's gonna live right there, so it should be good to go as well. And should have ample room there. And then we can do all the rest of the wiring using these guys right here. Cool. So one of the things that I was alerted to on the Omnibus F7 is on the underside right here, there's these three little pins right there. I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see it or not, but anyway, uh, two of them are marked five volts, one is marked three volts, and the middle one's marked VCC, so you have to bridge the ones that you want to feed to your receiver. In my case, I'm going to bridge the five volt and uh, VCC so that I get five volts to my receiver. And then we'll get the receiver wired on here real quick. So here we go, we're just going to really quickly bridge the five volts and the VCC. And that's it first. There we go. So now we got five volts going to the receiver pins, which is great. And then in the case of the Omnibus F7, uh, the S bus pads are over here. So these guys are here. So you have ground, five volts, and then S bus, in which case is the second bar is right here. So I'm just going to solder that. I had to go look up on this flight controller here where the, the power pins are. It's these two pins right here. It's kind of an odd location. So these two pins right here, boom, boom, right next to where we put the S-Bus. One is ground and the other one is V-Bat. So we're just gonna get that soldered up right now. And then we'll power it on and make sure that that works. Before I go plug new things in, just make sure that I have it correctly here. V-Bat ground. Okay, it looks good. I'm gonna be very careful here. Ah, there we go. So we're good to go. So the flight controller powered up. We've got the receiver powered up and the video. So everything is good to go. Uh, what we're gonna do now is mount, uh, start mounting this stuff up here and uh, get the uh, motor signal wires wired up, which is pretty much our last step here, guys. And then I have to go do some configurations to make sure that everything is spinning the way that it needs to spin. And uh, then we can hover this thing, see how it goes, tune it, made in it, all that good stuff. So uh, overall, not a bad build so far. A few little snags here and there, but that's normal. It's the first time that I've built this frame. All right, guys, so let's just recap real quick where we are at. So we have the <clears throat> receiver soldered to the flight controller. We have the flight controller powered. Uh, everything else here is good to go. We have the video set up all ready wired up here, so we don't have to worry about that. Only thing we have left to do is uh, solder up the signal and ground wires for each one of the ESCs. The other thing that I did here while I was not on camera is I put some tape around the... Uh, the capacitor and the, the cable here, just so that the capacitor is not loose, bouncing around or anything like that, so it'll be held by the, the pigtail right here. And uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. Feeling pretty good about this build, so let's get the signal wires installed here so that we can get the beautiful tones, and then I can configure this stuff in BioHeli Suite, and we can hover it inside. All right, let's get, let's get going here. So, 
Uh, front of the quad, it's that way, one, two, three, four. We're gonna go turn this this way, just so that it matches, so that I can see what I'm doing here. So this here is for me a C1, right here, motor one. That has to go to, so right here on the flight controller, let me just show you guys real quick, on the F7 Omnibus. So right here, yeah, these banks right here are your motor wires. So it goes uh, one, two, three, four, and then ground, 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 ground. So we're gonna start soldering on these two right here for motor one, which is on this corner. Let's see here, how much wire do we need? We we'll probably cut a little bit off. Not very much, just a little bit. Cool. So, first things first, I'm gonna uh, tin all of these pins here. Just because it's easier to put the just put the solder the wires on once it's tinned. Okay guys, so we got the signal wires soldered. This is not the prettiest wiring I've ever done. I don't really like having wires going that way. However, I don't have space to run the wires beneath it because my receiver is hiding under there. So I'm just gonna leave that as is right now. We're gonna plug this in and make sure that I get the beautiful tones that we usually get when things are working. And then we're gonna put some conformal coating on the stuff that we just soldered up. And I'm gonna do some configuration before we put the canopy and everything else on here and test it out. So let's uh, plug it in here. Contact. That was a weird sound. I never heard that one before. Okay, everything seems to be working. I'm gonna go do some quick tests in uh, in Betaflight and I'll be back to do the rest of the canopy and all that other stuff. So. All right guys, so that took me a lot longer than I would have expected to just uh, do what I needed to do. I had some problems with it because this is so cutting edge and it's just been released and the firmwares aren't quite there, yada, yada, yada. So let's talk about that for a real quick second here. So the first problem that I had was with the ESCs and it was getting the pass through to work. So uh, the 3.2, sorry, uh, the Betaflight 3.2 version that came with the F7 that I have right now, the Omnibus F7, didn't work out. So what I ended up having to do was uh, find Boris's uh, Jenkins where all the builds are being posted, grab the latest hex for the Omnibus F7 specifically, and get that flashed. Once I flashed that, I was able to connect with the pass-through. Ah, one more note. If you're gonna use pass-through with this stuff here, you have to use the latest Betaflight configurator. That would be 3.1.1. To make that work, what you have to do is go into your Chrome extensions, disable and delete the current Betaflight one that you have right there, okay? set your, your Chrome extensions to developer mode, and then you're gonna download the latest zip file of the configurator from GitHub and uh, get that installed by just dragging it onto your extensions window and it's gonna install automatically for you. So what I'm gonna do is I will put up a little quick video showing you guys how to do that stuff on the computer so that if you're gonna buy an F7 and you need to do this stuff to get past your working, I'll show you how to do it after we talk about what we're talking about here. Cool? All right. So uh, that was the first problem. Once I got that working, I was able to open up Bill Heli 32 and talk to the ESCs. So I got the uh, LEDs to come on, which I'll show you guys right now. So the LEDs are now on and working. There you go, pretty cool. Um, it takes a little bit longer to initialize than, uh, than I'm used to. See that, like that took quite a little while. I'm not sure why, but uh, it doesn't seem to affect performance at least yet. I haven't really tested it out. So anyway. Uh, we got that set up, so all I did was reverse uh, the two motors on the opposite corners here so that they would spin in the direction that I needed them to. I set the uh, current cutoff or the current protection to 40 amps, which is what these guys should be able to handle, no problem. And uh, other than that, I really didn't do much. I didn't mess with the startup power or anything else like that. I'm gonna leave it stock for now and then I'm gonna play with the settings later. There are new settings, a few new settings on the on the uh, new BL Heli, which is pretty cool. And uh, maybe I'll go over that when I do the video about the pass-through as well. Okay, so that covers the ESCs. The second problem that I had when I was trying to get all this stuff set up was with my receiver. So, when we were talking about this earlier, and let me see here. We were talking about this earlier, and I indicated to you guys that we should be soldering our S-Bus right here, because that's what it says, it says S-Bus right there. So it would be S-Bus, 5 volts, ground. This is where I soldered mine. 
Problem is, this port right now, with the current uh, F7 firmware, does not have an S bus inverter working at all. So if you attach your stuff here, it is not gonna work. So what you actually have to do to make this work is, uh, at least on mine, was to use these pins right here. So uh, this would be the ground, and this is the three volt, five volt thing that we bridged over there. And then this RX1 is actually gonna be serial port one that's already set to serial on uh, the default of the F7. So once you solder those three, which is what I did over here, I'll show you guys. So I moved my receiver wires up here. So one, two, three, right by the boot buttons right there. That worked. The only reason I figured this out was because I rewatched Project Blue Falcon's video on how he hooked up his uh, receiver and he showed it and I was like, oh yeah, of course. So I completely forgotten about that. So for now, this is something that is gonna change. So in the future, when F7s are a little bit, have a little bit more development time gone into them and the firmware has been updated a few more times, <coughs> you're probably gonna see an inverter on that proper S bus port and then everything will make sense and it'll be no problem. But for now, if you're buying it right now today, consider doing this because you might need it if your invert if your uh, S bus version needs inversion. So other than that, everything was fine. I was able to set up my rates, set up uh, all of my, my controller and everything else. And I'm gonna show you guys right now, I'm just gonna arm it real quick and we'll see it spin up. Weird how long that takes, I don't know why. Okay, see, there you go, it arms. And these are spinning in the proper direction. These are some turkey motors. Cool. So there we have it. The electronics are working and now we can move on to actually uh, doing the camera and putting the canopy on and finishing this build. So actually what I'm gonna do uh, for you guys is I will explain the uh, how to do the softer side of this thing, how I did the pass through and everything else after we finish the build. Cool, so we'll finish the build, we'll get the hover and then I'll leave you guys with the last bit of the video being how to do the softer stuff because that stuff is boring. I'm not gonna be able to maiden this guy and show you guys a maiden video on this video because I looked at the forecast and we have like rain for the next few days and I'm quite busy. So this might have to wait until next week when I'm gonna do the tuning video for this guy and then we'll go over some more of the BioHeli and Betaflight settings that are new to 3.2. So let's get this thing finished up here. So we have our camera. We have our wiring for the camera somewhere. Yep, here it is. Uh, we have this guy. And now we have to start using some of this hardware here. Here. Ah, okay, so I understand how these are gonna work now. So. It came with these little pieces right here. They're kind of offset two holes. So that's how these are gonna go on. So one of them is gonna, so you're gonna screw these down like pretty much straight down like this onto the bottom of the frame. Let me zoom in a little bit here so you guys can see a little bit better. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, so here it is, this little piece of aluminum right there. That's gonna screw through the bottom. We're just gonna hold it in place and then it's gonna screw through the side to hold the plate in place. So let's do that real quick here. I'm gonna sneak this guy underneath these wires real quick. I think it's in the right spot. I think it might be easier to start this without the plate in place, for sure. Oh my god. So I'm just getting these started. I'm not gonna screw them too hard because I want them to be able to move still. And uh, I'm just going here through the bottom. Okay. 
Another important thing to note is that there's two sizes of screw. Um, there's a small one and a big one. The big one is going to go through the bottom because it has to cover more, more carbon, and the other one's going to go through the side. I am starting to think that these are standard screws because they're not really fitting with my uh, my Allen keys, which is uh, kind of annoying. But I do have a standard set somewhere, so I'll go grab that in a sec. So, okay, so now I have these started. So you can see here, there's like these little blocks of aluminum that I put down. So these here are gonna mate with the uh, with the canopy right here. So I'm gonna just fit that in there, boom, boom. And then we're gonna come in with a screw from the side and screw it in and it should hold. There we go. So one down. Let's grab another one here. Okay, so now we have uh, one side of this guy already wired up. No problem. Or not wired up. Screwed on. Okay, let's put on the second one here. We're gonna do the same thing. Right, uh, where is the top plate here? I'm actually gonna end up using this top plate here. I was told that you could uh, stack up this guy right here and use it, but I don't have enough height, enough height clearance for it, so I'm just gonna keep this off. What I am gonna do is uh, I'm gonna use this plate here, I believe, right there, perhaps. And then I'm gonna have the VTX03 coming in, let's see. Coming in like this, boom, boom. And I'm just gonna have it coming out of the rear right there. Boom, look at that, safe place for a prop. Safe from props. So I'm gonna move it back here so that it's really, really safe and it won't get broken at all. Like, see, it's gonna rest right there. Boom, boom, boom. So let's do that. Actually, let's get this guy taped up here too while we're at it so that it's not annoying to do later.
put some uh, zip ties here too to hold it in place. It doesn't go flying anywhere. Should hold it pretty nicely actually. There we go. Let's see if we can get the second thing here to fit. Boom, there we go, beauty. So we got these two and I'll be able to do like something over here to do the other antenna as well, which is sweet. Oh, I like this, oh, thick. I forgot to slide the camera in there. I should probably connect the camera before I do that. I've gotten ahead of myself a little bit here. Okay, so this guy here is like an optional plate you can use if you uh, don't use this top plate right here. You can basically have this guy, it'll fit like this, and it will go in place of those little blocks that we put back there so that you get just this little plate back here. So it drops, uh, I hear it drops a bit of the weight, that's what that does.
So I just secured a camera there, I don't want it to move around. Put one more over here. There we go, come on. Yeah, okay, so we'll leave it like that for now. Let's get the uh, side screws set up here. So it's a good thing to keep the screws kind of loose here on the bottom corners before you tighten them up, otherwise you're going to get some cross threading and shit like that. You don't want that. Tighten up the plates on the sides first, then I'm going to tighten the bottoms so that it brings everything down. So we've gotten that stuff tightened down. Now all we have to do is put these uh, nice cool little orange standoffs here. I'm gonna move this one up so that it sticks up like that, boom. And this is also gonna help stiffen up the frame. So as I'm adding all this stuff here, I can already feel the frame getting much stiffer and much more resilient, but it still feels pretty light. So I'm excited to see how much this is gonna weigh.
I gotta say, these little black screws, I'm, I'm not too, too impressed with. Uh, some of them are not the same size as the other ones, uh, if that makes any sense. Some are like just slightly too small and they won't fit with my uh, Allen key. So what I end up having to do is uh, like I'm using like a star uh, thread and I'm kind of cutting into them a little bit. Which is not what I like to do, but I don't, I don't know why. Some of them work perfectly with my Allen key and other ones don't. So uh, not sure why. Everything is super nice and firm. The whole thing has been like stiffened up by adding this roll cage and torquing down all the screws, which is awesome. So, let's torque these screws a tiny little bit. Make sure everything's tight, tight, tight. Cool. Okay, so let's check this out. Here. So, we have a nicely protected antenna back here, which is sweet. This is probably not going to get broken, I hope or maybe we can tuck it underneath and make it come out of the bottom. Come on. Yeah, there's like literally no way that that is gonna... I might get some interference with the carbon. We'll see how it goes when we actually get flying, but uh, if it becomes a problem, I'll move it and I'll get another antenna going or I'll move this further down so that it's... Uh, not so uh, obscured by the body here. Cool, so the next thing that I need to do is uh, set up my uh, receiver antenna. <clears throat> That's pretty much the last thing that we need to do before we put some props on this thing and hover it. And then I'm gonna leave you guys with a nice tutorial on how to get the pass through working on F7s and the latest BL Heli and all of the good stuff. So let's get ready here to make an antenna. There you go, guys. So here we have the finished uh, FPV Syndicate Shredder. Looks freaking cool. I'm loving these uh, arms with no nothing on top. Everything here on the bottom, pretty freaking sweet. So uh, what we need to do right now is put a bit of foam on the underside of the quad so that stuff doesn't get messed up. Put a battery strap on it. Cool. 
So let's angle up the camera to my usual 45 degrees. Something like that. Check out how well protected that camera is too. So a lot of protection all the way around, a lot of protection all the way around your electronics. Everything is really, really, really well protected. Seems like everything is gonna be very, very nicely far away from uh, from the props as well. So this thing looks cool, man. I'm very, very happy with how this turned out. All right, so uh, let's uh, get this thing plugged in real quick just to see if the video is still working and everything is good. And then I'm gonna put a battery strap on it, some props, and we'll hover it. Okay guys, so uh, here we have it. Here's the FPV Syndicate Shredder. This thing is uh, super cool looking. It turned out very, very clean, even though my wiring is not perfect in there. It still looks freaking dope, man. All this red LED stuff and these nice racecraft props, super awesome. Uh, lots of clearance on the body from everything else, like it's nowhere near hitting your electronics with these props. So I'm very happy about that. So let's hover this thing and make sure that nothing explodes and it doesn't kill anyone. All right, folks, before I forget, let's uh, let's weigh the drone since it's done. Let's put it to grams. So here we have just the shredder. 349, that's not bad. It's a little bit heavy, but not bad. Let's see how much it weighs with the batteria. So 530. Yeah, Transport Canada is gonna not be happy about this, but it's gonna fly anyway. So uh, let's keep going. Oh, there you have it, folks. Um, it hovered and it didn't kill anybody, which is pretty badass. So here it is again. Didn't kill anyone. That's awesome. So I cannot wait to maiden this thing. However, it is going to rain for like the next few days. So I'm not probably not going to be able to maiden this and show you guys the maiden at the end of the video like I usually do. This video has already taken a long time to get to you guys in the first place. So I don't want to delay it anymore. I'm just going to release it as we have it here just with the finished build. And then I'm going to release the maiden and all the good stuff when we do the tuning of this guy. Because I'm really, really curious about tuning these new uh, ESCs and everything else. And uh, so far these motors sound super smooth. So it seems like a pretty winner uh, piece of kit that I picked out here and uh, it looks great. So uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not sticking around because uh, there's more cool content coming in the next few weeks where I'm gonna be doing some uh, crazy uh, custom Mia builds with some stuff that I've been designing and 3D printing myself. So thanks for watching guys.